Have you ever wanted to throw away a new tool five minutes after you opened it up and tried it? I have, and it's actually the subject of today's cool tools. So that makes it exciting for me because I know this tutorial is gonna help other people who may already have this tool. It's also gonna inspire you to add it to your toolbox once I'm finished. So what I got for this week is a bias binder attachment for your sewing machine. I spent a lot of time researching different versions and I looked at the reviews and I zoomed in and I looked at the way they were made and I picked this particular one from Amazon because I just felt that it looked like the angle of the cone and the way the, the fabric goes into it looked like it was going to work for me. So I also picked out the most narrow one I could find. So this is a one inch, which makes a quarter inch finished bias binding. And I think the narrower the bias binding, the more finicky it could be. So I thought I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try this with that one and just see how it goes. So it came in and it came in these, these Ziploc bags. So let me just show you what you get here. So I'm just gonna put them on the table here. So basically you get the bias binder, which is this portion, you can see the cone. Okay, and then you get this swing arm. The swing arm is what the bias binder attaches to. These three holes right here is how it attaches. So you can actually sit it up more forward or a little bit behind depending on which hole you use with the screws. The two screws that come with it, you can see they're very shallow or very short um, screws because they just screw in to hold these two pieces of metal together and it does a very good job. I've already tried it. So that's how that attaches. And I'm going to just go ahead and do that. I'm using my stubby screwdriver that came from Bucklebee Bag website. So I will put a link to the screwdrivers if you want to get a stubby screwdriver because they work really well for this. So I'm going to just put the screw. Let's do it like this so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to just put the screw, sit it in the hole like this. And then I'm going to use the screwdriver to screw it down. And I'm not going to tighten it until I get the second one in there. But see, if you leave it flat on the table like this, I found that to be the easiest way to get these little screws in. Because once they're seated in there, they're upright. And then you can just righty-tighty them. Right, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. Oops. Okay, so I'm just going to tighten these down. Once they're both in there, I'm gonna make sure I tighten them both down because we don't want the bias binder to slip at this juncture. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten that down. All right, so now it's attached. And really, once you've attached it like this, there, there really isn't any reason to take it back off. You can leave these two together and that way you won't lose any of these small parts. But basically, this is now ready to go on to the sewing machine. So before we go to the sewing machine, I wanna show you my samples and my progression in learning how to use this tool. All right, so let me show you my first gnarled up mess. And this is why I literally wanted to throw the bias binder away. You can see here, I cut a one inch strip of printed quilting cotton and you can see that did not go very well. Then I tried it again and I got a little better, but still not fantastic. Oh, where is it? is it? This one? Oh yeah, this one right here. So, so you can see like I missed it in places, but I got a little better. Both of these samples were done using the straight stitch foot, which is a very narrow foot. That turned out not to be my friend. So I switched to the zigzag foot. That's the nine millimeter, you know, wide foot, just the standard one with the walking foot on my machine. And you can see when I switched the foot, I got a much better result. Okay, so I think you can see that. 
and I actually did two of them. So you can see this is a perfect application for doing drawstrings or spaghetti straps. You can see it stretches. Okay, so then I decided to see if I could actually attach the quarter inch bias binding to the edge of fabric. So let me show you that. So my first attempt at that was not glorious. Okay, so this is just a cotton, the Japanese cotton that I worked with this past summer to make shorts, a scrap of that. And you can see I missed it in places. Um, I had a hard time getting started. But then once I got going, you can see this is much nicer here. And then I did a bigger sample. So you can see that front and back, this worked out almost perfect. So I was feeling very encouraged once I figured out how to get it to work. I decided to try a little piece of knit. So you can see on this one, this is just a lightweight knit. You know, and I played with getting that on, so you can see you can use it to put, um, well, this is a non-stretch woven onto a knit. And then I was feeling very excited, so I actually <laughs> got out my crotch example from an old Fit Tip Tuesday video, and I bound the entire crotch edge with the curve and everything. So by this point, I was feeling very excited about it. So let's go to the sewing machine and I'm going to show you how I worked out how to go from getting gnarled up disaster to getting it to work nicely. The bias binder came with these two little screws and these washers to attach the swing arm onto the swing arm onto the bed of the machine. I decided to forego these. So I'm going to use the thumb screw that came with the presser foot hem guide that I kicked this cool tool series off with last summer because it fits perfectly instead of trying to deal with those other screws. This one is designed to loosen and tighten with your fingers and then you can give it a snug with the screwdriver versus those other screws which you need to use the screwdriver the entire time. So I just felt like this would be a little bit easier. So the way this attaches is you're this little slit right here goes over the, the hole where your screw is and I'm just going to seat that into the hole and sort of start to tighten it down with my finger. You know, and then when I get close, I can really snug it with my stubby screwdriver, but I'm not going to tighten it down yet because the first thing you want to do here is position this where you want it in front of your presser foot. So this, this adjustment here, you can bring the whole thing in up till this guide hits the side of your presser foot. If you want to, you can actually also unscrew these two screws to just move the guide over. So if you want to leave the swing arm itself over here, I can loosen these two screws, lefty loosey, and I can use this sort of as a guide, you know, against the presser foot there, and then I can tighten it down. So like if that's sitting near the end of my machine, um, I can tighten that down. I'm not going to use this right now. I'm going to tuck that back in. Going forward, I will have more tutorials on different ways to use this bias binder. I want to play with how you would use it on a going around a corner and maybe some other things. So look for more tutorials on this bi bias binder in the future. But for now, I just want to show you how to use it. I'm going to tighten down the screw that holds the swing arm in place. Okay, so now that's secure. This still is free to swing back and forth, and there's a little bit of tension on the joint here. There's no screw, so you don't have to tighten it down and loosen it to move this back and forth, but there is enough tension on it that it doesn't like wobble around. So that's how you can swing this out of the way if you're not using it, and then swing it back into position when you want to use it. This screw in front here allows me, again, to fine tune the position of where the bias binder is. Now you can see the way I attach this, 
this is okay this is it's too close to the presser foot because you can see the the actual bias binder is going to come out here and what I want to do is get this front of the cone to kind of be near the center of my presser foot because I'm working with the narrow quarter inch binder so I'm actually going to loosen this back up slide this back here so it's out of the way I'm going to tighten that back down and then I can move this until this guide is very maybe an eighth of an inch from the center of the presser foot so after I get the swing arm attached to the bed of the machine and I figure out where I want my cone to be sitting in front of my presser foot and again we're gonna want it a little bit to the right side of the needle just a little bit so what I'm gonna do is just put it right there and the guide at the very front is about an eighth of an inch from the center this guide right here so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna righty tighty that down so I have that distance okay so now you can see I can swing this back and forth and everything else is securely attached to the machine so when you are working with this, you want to cut one inch strips of fabric cut on the bias. And you really want to make sure that it's not slightly more than an inch because the opening over here is where you feed the, the bias tape in. And you want to make sure that it can, it can freely fit through the beginning of the cone as it starts to go into the narrower part it's going to start to create that double fold but you don't want it to be bigger than an inch because it might get jammed up so i cut like just scant inch like literally one line on the ruler less than an inch and notice what i did here i cut myself a little point on my end of my bias strip you're going to insert the, the, the binding in so the wrong side is facing you. And really the best tool I have found to coach this through is, in fact, the screwdriver. So I'm literally going to just put it through like this. Now as it comes through, there's a second set of guides close to the very tip of the bias binder. So I'm going to coax it through all the way through those second set okay and then what's going to happen is the little tail is going to poke out of the bias binder and I'm just going to coach it out until I can grab it now what you're looking for at this point is you want to make sure that your strip is going in evenly here and then as it travels along the bias binder as it's creating the top and bottom fold on either side that it's actually folding evenly and then when you look at the resulting uh, folded binding here notice the folds are even with each other okay so that's going to give us a good start see I can pull it out I can also pull it back I can floss it back and forth just in case I need to you know get it to really sit in there properly and you can see that it is sitting in there properly so for our first sample what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swing it back notice that I put the tail under the presser foot I'm going to move my needle over a little bit to the left of center and then I'm going to put the presser foot down or the needle down and let's just try it and see what happens okay so you can see what's happening here is the cone and the guide are a little bit too far to the right and my needle is completely missing this quarter inch so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my needle unloosen this screw and I'm just gonna slide it over just a little bit so I'm gonna just slide it over 
and I'm going to raise my presser foot so I can also move the binding. And you can see now my needle is going to hit the edge, the folded edges of the binding. And I can move my needle over to the right just a little bit. You can play with how big of a bite your stitch is taking. And then I'm just going to keep my finger on this part right here. I'm not really worrying about the strip itself. Um, it has a pretty, I think the tension created by the shape of the cone is enough. So I'm really not touching the strip so much. I'm just holding this. Okay, as you can see, it's just stitching along very nicely. Um, I can play with the position of my needle. You know, I can move it over a little bit one way or the other. Um, also, I can push this away a little bit if I need more space. I'm giving myself about a half an inch of space between the end of the cone and the tip of the presser foot. So let's look and see what we got. All right, so you can see we've gotten this very nice spaghetti strap. Okay, so that's how you would use it to do spaghetti straps or drawstrings. I'm going to take another piece and let's try it attaching the strip to, the, to a piece of woven fabric. I'm going to use a, a piece of lightweight denim this time. So I'm going to stick it in, and again, remember, it needs to be the wrong side facing you. And I'm just going to keep pushing it until I can push it out of the tip of the cone. Okay, and again, before I get started, I just want to make sure it's really feeding in there properly. It's always a good idea, I think, to give yourself a few extra inches of bias binding that you can pull through just to ensure everything is advancing through properly. Then I'm going to take my piece of denim, and I created a curvy edge just for more interest here. Let's stick this under the presser foot. All right, and then I'm going to take my denim and I'm going to just slide it in there so it's in between the folds. I'm going to put the needle down to hold the, the bias binding together, and then I'm going to pull back on the cone itself until I have, again, about a half an inch of breadth between the tip of the cone and the, the end of the presser foot. Now I can start stitching, and again, I can move my needle over if I need to, just a little bit. Okay. Okay, so you can see... As I'm moving along, it's catching both ends really nicely. Now, as I come into a concave or inside curve, I'm going to pull the, the bias binder away from the presser foot just a little bit more because I want to guide the fabric in on an angle like this. Okay, so I'm just keeping it slightly farther away. And 
and then as I come out of the curve, I'm just gonna move a little closer or let my bias binder come a little closer. Okay, let's see how that came out. I'm just gonna cut this here. All right, so look how nice that is. Okay, and really, I've practiced with this for a little bit, maybe a half an hour, and this is probably my seventh or eighth, seventh or eighth time using this. So imagine with a little more practice, I can fine tune how close the stitching gets to those folded edges, but I'm pretty pleased with that. All right, and then just for ha-has, I cut a neckline out of a black knit. Let's try that and see how that works. So I'm going to work with this knit, and again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a little point to help feed my fabric through the cone. I like using the, the little screwdriver to advance the fabric through the cone because it's not as sharp as a stiletto or a seam ripper and I feel like it won't scratch it as much. It's a perfect little edge to get in there. All right, so I've got my fabric advancing through the cone. I'm just gonna back it up and make sure it's in agreement. Notice that those folded edges are even with each other. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to just sit this in here. So I'm going to swing it into the presser foot, and then I'm going to get my fabric nestled in there. I'm going to put the needle down. I'm going to put the presser foot down and pull it away slightly. I can see I'm going to need to move my needle over just a little bit for this one. All right, and let's see what we get, oops, where a stiletto can help us is if I need to physically stick it into the folds of the binding here. So I'm really gonna, I'm gonna poke it in there to get it started like that. And then let's see if we can get this to work. So I've poked the fabric with my stiletto into the binding. And again, I'm gonna guide my fabric the same way. I'm trying not to pull my knit, right? And as I come into my curve, I'm just gonna move a little bit farther away. So if you notice as you're sewing along, your strip is actually wider than the quarter inch, that means it's not catching the back. So I started to catch it here, but then notice it got away from me. So what I'm gonna do is, let's see if I can back this up. Oh no, I'm gonna take this out. Let's see. See what happened was it started to slide and now I don't have it catching on the underside. So I'm just gonna use my handy dandy little Kai seam remover that I shared with you a few weeks ago. Look at how neat that thing works. If you haven't gotten yourself one of these yet, I would totally get one. My seam ripping time has decreased by probably 70% because this works so much faster than a traditional seam ripper. But you can see I can literally just 
get rid of those stitches like that. I'm going to try this one more time. Okay. Bias binding is still in the cone. Let me see if I physically I'm going to fold it in there like that. I'm just going to put a pin here to hold it. Just at the start. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing this in here. Like this. And I'm going to get it lined up so that it's near the pin. Then I'm going to put my needle down and take the pin out. Let's see if I can get this to work. And again, I'm going to use my stiletto to feed that in. Now let's see. That seems to be working a little better. So again, I'm looking here and making sure the fabric is right against that portion of the bias binder. Let's see how this came out. I'm super excited. You can see my neckline edge worked beautifully. And notice right from the start, I got it in there. Okay, so taking the time to use a stiletto to get it in there and maybe just pin it at the very beginning. That's perfect. Okay, so that looks really, really nice. Let's flip it over and look. Okay, so you can see that that looks very, very nice. And notice my knit is not pulling. So that's very cool. And then let's take a closer look at my woven sample. Again, you can see how nice that is all the way across. Let's look at the back. I'm a little far over here, but still it caught. So... Again, I'm going to practice some more, but really I've only used this bias binder like 10 or 11 times at this point, And I was able to go from creating a tortured spaghetti strap into getting it to finish the edge pretty nicely. As you can see, with a little bit of practice, you can get good with this. So just keep in mind that you don't want to jam the front of the cone right up against the front of the presser foot because that makes it more difficult. And try working with a wide zigzag foot that has coverage to hold the entire bias folded strip flat versus trying to use a straight stitch foot. I think those are the two important changes I made to be successful with this. If you have any questions or comments, please post those below and I will help you. So thank you so much for watching Cool Tools. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.